Hi and welcome to the Science Fantasy Experience and to a video response, albeit a somewhat delayed response. Back in January the Rejecticons did the Out of Your Comfort Zone challenge and it absolutely had me intrigued. If you're unfamiliar with the Rejecticons, they are a YouTube collective of Inutabi, Larkin's Lair, Sardo Nunspot 82 and Kato's Collection. Primarily they do Transformers content, but the respective people all do various other bits and pieces. If you are big into your Star Wars, then check out Inutabi. If you like custom work, check out Larkin. If high-end Soul of Kajokin, beautiful pieces, Sardo Numspar is your man. And finally, if you like the books of Twilight, please do check out Kato. Hmm. He does other things too. But yeah, they did a uh, live stream, all four of them, in January. And I think it was Inu Tabi said, yeah, we've got this challenge coming up. The Out of Your Comfort Zone challenge. And you need to go out on a toy hunt and pick up something that is really out of your comfort zone. And as I said, it just absolutely intrigued me because I'm somewhat of an eclectic collector for sure. You know, I pick up toys of the present, you know, modern, vintage, all types of toy lines. But, you know, I am particular about certain things. I have my own set of guidelines, my own rules. And, you know, I, I tend not to go for things that I really have no connection to or know nothing about. So yeah, that's that's why it got me so intrigued because I kind of, I had an idea of what I wanted to get, but what takes me out of my comfort zone? And that would be picking up Fortnite figures. So, yeah. You'd think I wouldn't be out of a comfort zone if I'd already got one. I picked up Rex last year and that was done on a whim, just on a random trip to the shops, not even thinking about toy hunting, but he was there in a toy shop on sale, you know, I think maybe 17 pounds. And I was just like, that's a really cool action figure. I like dinosaurs. And it looks just super postable and loads and loads of fun. So I just thought, Do you know what? I'll pick it up because it looks cool. Why it takes me out of my comfort zone is I know absolutely nothing about Fortnite. Not one thing. I couldn't tell you anything about it. I couldn't tell you about the characters, what the kind of game is like, what even you do in the game. And <laughs> a year later, <laughs> I still can't. I still can't tell you anything about it. I know absolutely nothing. And I now have two action figures. So yeah, that's why I'm kind of out of, you know, my norms, my, my safe space in terms of collecting. But even with that, you'd think, oh, you know, You've got one already, and you're getting another. You must be, like, kind of all right in picking up another. But, yeah, there's... Rex is a great figure, for sure. But he's, you know, he's not perfect. He's he's a little bit top-heavy. He's stiff as hell. And now that I've got another one... Rex kind of 
does look a little bit bland. But obviously I've not opened Dyer yet, so I'm kind of prejudging and you know that's that's another bit to kind of have doubts about picking up. Another thing is, you know, is he gonna be as good? I kind of think that Dyer is gonna blow Rex out of the water for sure. A post-apocalyptic werewolf. I'm I'm down with that, absolutely. But in terms of Fortnite, nah, nothing. I'm just gonna treat it as cool action figures instead of getting drawn into kind of being out of my comfort zone. So yeah, let's just have a look at the box first. I'm not gonna go too much into Rex because I did a video on him last year and I can pop a link to that in the description box below. But yeah, probably gonna mention the same things as with the, the Rex box. They're, they're, they're a bit meh. Yeah, big window for sure. And you get to see a lot of the figure and what it comes with, the stand two weapons and an axe weapon but yeah just the box is pretty it's pretty naff you've got the picture kind of either side i'm gonna presume that's artwork from the game or promotional artwork from the game i kind of don't think that in 10 years people will think oh yeah do you remember those fortnite boxes they were really really good no nah, they're just Boring as. The back's a little bit better. You get to see other bits in the line. I think this die is a, a newer wave compared to some of the ones that came came last year. And this guy. Is it me or is that blatantly Firefly from G.I. Joe? It looks pretty much just like him. What does look very interesting is this crazy looking big flight sky light thing, glider, I guess. Accessories for seven inch figures, are few and far between when you get into this scale, you know, there's there's a couple of vehicles and I wouldn't have thought there is accessory packs for, you know, Star Wars Black Series or Marvel Legends. You just don't get that many extra bits. So that's kind of interesting to see that you can get something else. And they've made a big point of 22 points of articulation. That's a hell of a lot of moving parts for sure on an action figure. I'm super excited to get him out of this somewhat rubbish box. So here it is, Rex, freed of his plastic prison. And I'm gonna tell you, getting him out of the box and putting him next to Rex, he is like vastly superior to Rex in pretty much every aspect. Yeah, Rex is good, but this, this is something else. It's phenomenal compared to Rex. The amount of detail, the joints are so much stronger, the, the whole look, the, the play factor. It's stunning. I can't believe how good it is. Why was I worried? There was no reason to be worried at all. If we have a look at the detail, his face, it's so well done. It's, this is how I expect a post-apocalyptic werewolf to look with ragged clothes. All the jeans are cut up, but then there's folds and creases, so it does look like a worn-in pair, like he has, you know, changed in the moonlight into his 
werewolf form, the ripped up waistcoat, bandana, just little details that just really bring him to life. And he is full of weapons. So he's got his axe, his katana, nunchucker at the back. It's it's absolutely incredible. When I was looking at him at the box, I thought he had three weapons, but the katana's actually for kind of display because it's got a little nodule which goes onto his back. I guess you could put it in his you could put it in his hand. You could easily cut it off, shave it off if you wanted to give him. A sheathed weapon, I guess, but there's no need when he's got his axe and his, I'm guessing that is a, is that a pump action shotgun, a semi-automatic? Yeah, so we will go into the articulation because 22 points, there's so much you can do. I've never seen a head and neck combined in terms of articulation. Usually you just get a head swivel and the backwards and forwards, but this has got head and and neck. He's he's freaking awesome. They really weren't kidding when they said 22 points of articulation. So you've got like toes, ankle, knee bend, legs, you've got ab crunch that swivels, wrists, elbow, a bicep swivel, obviously on both sides, and the head and the neck. So in here that's like an extra piece. And the plastic, the plastic feels incredible. All this is really like hard plastic, but when you get to the wrists, they're a bit more malleable, and the bandana is of that soft plastic so you can play around with it give it a look that you so desire I have no like fears of moving moving him around whereas with Rex it's just like it really creaks which is fine because I just know it's gonna stand the test of time and just loosen up over time but yeah this 22 it's just gone of the days of five points of articulation for sure it's all about the high range let's check out some different poses some dual wielding action and again cleverly hiding the peg waiting to unsheathe the katana you can really get some height on there as well. You can even get a kneeling down sniping pose. This thing is incredible. It's so poseable. I, I had no clue it was going to be this impressive. Upon reflection, I guess I'm not that much out of my comfort zone. I love toys and especially action figures. I've really embraced picking up action figures for the past year and a half, ever much more so than I was before. In terms of Fortnite, I guess I'm never going to really view these as Fortnite figures because of zero connection. I just think they're really, really cool. A guy in a dinosaur costume and a post-apocalyptic werewolf. So, this has been Rex, this has been Dyer, I've been Rudy Sassou, and always remember, it's as much about play as it is display. Thanks for watching.